Hello, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello, beloved women of the world, and especially women of a certain age, because if you are interested in my show, you are beyond 45, I believe. And this is what my show is all about. But hello, my name is Dr. Angelica Christie, and I am your show host of the show, your radiant life after 45. It's a show for women who are not done living yet, who want more from life, whose first part of life has been taking care of so many things, so many other people maybe, maybe even children, maybe a husband and family. But this second part of your life after 50, I would say, is really about you. And if you are not quite 50 yet, then uh, this is the time to get in, not only inspired, but all of the information so that you are ready, all right? And when if you are already in your 60s or 70s or 80s, then this show is for you as well because so many things are, you know, we, we all grow with what is happening in the world. And I always keep you up uh, with the latest, the best, and so that you can live in the moment, in this time and age, the age of enlightenment, the age of um, Aquarius, the age of the heart. But it's also because we are not quite there yet. It is also a very challenging and confusing time, um, not only for the children who are growing up, and that may be your grandchildren, uh, but also for us who are getting older, who have not grown up with, you know, portable devices, electronic devices, and especially now AI. And there is so much that is happening in the world so fast that it is um, challenging to keep up and stay grounded. And we really, this is the time to take care of your physical vehicle. This incredible body of yours that is in this amazing time on earth to experience everything, to experience uh, the changes of everything and also your role in it because you may be a light bearer. I'm sure you're a light bearer. Otherwise, you wouldn't be interested in, in uh, getting inspired by somebody like me. Or Nothing is um, by chance. You have been guided to listen to me and to be, um, if you are not live with me, you may be listening to the archived um, sessions. And they all uh, uh, span... A, an area of physical well-being because I'm a naturopathic doctor specializing in women's healthy longevity. I am a spiritual teacher, a Reiki master teacher as well. And I am also a certified relationship coach. And I believe everything in life is about relationships. And it starts with the relationship you have with yourself. Never forget that. That is the most important relationship, especially in the second part of your life. If you are a mother and your children are out of the house, you will always be a mother. And yet your focus now in the second part of your life must be more on you than on anybody else. And from that incredible treasure chest of experience and 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 love and um of youness that has lived through so many other things you can share so much more okay so this is the first episode of uh five and uh the we are talking about the fear 
of aging. So I want to unmask the fear of aging. And there are many aspects of fear of aging. There is the fear of the unknown that we are discussing today. Then there is the fear of disease. And as we get older, that comes more and more into, into focus, right? And then there is the fear of loneliness. And again, as we age, loneliness becomes more and more um, of a possibility. Fear of recreating yourself. That is really when you believe that you are too old. You, have, you still have so much to give. You have a treasure chest of experience and desires and unfulfilled dreams that you, um, you may feel anxieties about this or you may feel sad because of this erroneous belief that you may be too old to recreate your life, to recreate yourself, to, uh, to do something there, to do something that you didn't have the time for or uh, were not um, courageous enough or whatever it is. I want to explore all of these points. Oh, and the fifth one, the last one we will discuss is the fear of death and dying. And the closer, for example, I'm in my 70s, so mid uh, 70s and a little bit beyond the mid of my 70s. So fear of death is something I had to um, manage and become comfortable with and unpack that, you know, because this is what we do here. We are, go we are going to unpack these issues. And today I want to unpack with you and explore the fear of the unknown. Because when we are young, we are excited about the life we envision and we want to create it exactly for ourselves the way we envision it. And we have no doubt that that's going to happen, right? We feel invincible and we feel ready to face the challenges as they present themselves. The ego mainly drives us to achieve the best life according to our training that we got uh, through childhood and school and then maybe later on uh, in the uh, chosen area of our our um, interests that may have become uh, a professional or a business interest. But anyway, um, we the ego mainly drives us to achieve whatever the, the focus or the, the goal that, that we used to have. So we are really, we have been training and increasing our capabilities and all of this. So we were really busy and had little time to reflect. But now that you have maybe raised your children, if you had children or have children, because you always have them, right? But uh, there's only a certain time where you raise them. Maybe you struggled with balancing family and work, or even if you stayed home running the small but very demanding enterprise of your household and family life is really sometimes people overlook this and sometimes women don't give themselves enough credit what an incredible and may i say challenging job that is but there comes a time in your life where everything changes your direct involvement and role in your children's upbringing started to fade or maybe it's already uh, finished, gone. Now the focus returns to you and you ask yourself, what is my life all about? Because it's not just about being a mother if you had children or being a wife if you are married. It is about you. Who am, who, who are you? You have to ask yourself, who am I? And you may feel that time passed by too quickly and you have not spent enough time on yourself. 
And the older you get, the faster time seems to race past you. I think this is happening to everybody because there's something about our time in which we live that everything seems to go faster and faster and faster. But as you get older, it gets even faster. The future still seems unclear and, and even uncertain. Bodily changes and discomfort arise like a robber destroying your energy and youthful appearance. From month to month and year to year, you look in the mirror and you notice the subtle changes. And you know this is what the aging process is all about. You have maybe a hard time visualizing or even accepting that elderhood or that beautiful matureness or the crone period of moving into the crone period. And you may not know that you can actually look forward to it in a positive way. So if you don't know this and, and, um, and just are stuck in holding on to youth and to your youthful appearance, no matter what, the fear arises from a feeling of losing control. You want to know the future, but you cannot. And that's not just the future of your physical body, but it's also the future of who are you in society? What is your contribution to life in the second part of your life? And what? how do you fulfill all of these unfulfilled dreams that have never been allowed to rise and be not only discovered, but then lived by and lived through. And if you don't do that, then regret, disappointment, and the lack of purpose can create a downward spiral into anxiety, angst, and even depression. We do not want to go there. I know you know this, right? It does not have to be that way. As much as you experience certainty of purpose and a clear path to fulfill your plan as a parent, maybe as a partner, and maybe as a successful and active creator of your desires in all areas, even your business. And your life may have been really complex or it maybe still is complex. It is complex, especially during middle age. Now is the time to surrender, to change. And even if you're not in the change yet, get, start, embracing change because you cannot stop it. It will come. Surrendering does not mean resigning. On the contrary, the unknown in your later years is like a clean canvas on which you can design your life anew with the same tenacity you had when you were a child. And we often don't really realize this and don't think about it because our world is still so very much, I don't want to say 100%, but so very much designed uh, to be for youth, for, um, yeah, for the young. And so when it addresses the middle age, it addresses us in a way of, oh my God, you know, here you can stay young or here you can turn back the clock 20 years or so. Hmm. There is a cycle in older age that mirrors that of our early, earlier youth. Although the physical body withers a bit, you now enjoy a similar freedom from certain responsibility, especially when your children are out of the house. You have more time for yourself. The question then, of course, is how do you want to live through these freshly gained what I call your freedom years. So rather than lamenting about what was lost or could have been and was not, you now have a brand new canvas to paint your most desirable vision of yourself in the most vivid and beautiful colors and in 
the future that you can envision. What is it that you are really longing for and that maybe you haven't had time or the uh, opportunity to create, to manifest earlier in your life? You see, the unknown is not your enemy, but actually the unknown is your friend and teacher. It is like when you were young and did not know what life could present to you or should or would present to you. You had a beginner's mind, but you were fearlessly open to learn while experiencing life without resistance. You embraced it. You were eager to experience new things and new things and new things. And every new experience brought a deeper understanding of life. And now it is the same. Every new experience still brings a deeper understanding of life and your soul's agenda, because now it's about you. Exceptionally, if you choose to start the inner journey of discovery, discovery of your uh, unrealized gifts of who you truly are, and it is a journey. You don't discover it just by learning something out of a book or, or listening to a podcast. Or um, it, is, it is a path. It is a life. It is a, a journey. That is really what it is. You can clearly see that the unknown holds the perfect open space in which all possibilities exist, just like when we were young. All possibilities existed. And as we are much older now, if we create that space, all possibilities still exist in a different way, not from a teenager to the growing, uh, uh, the maturing woman, but now from a matured woman into our um wisdom years in our freedom years yeah so with your seasoned wisdom and an open heart you can and must surrender to and embrace the unknown as an opportunity con to con <laughs> to consciously create the highest the truest and most powerful version of you that may be is still waiting to be discovered. Because as I said earlier, this journey is inside. It is inside of you. What is it that, who are you really? Because we women, especially, we wear so many hats, right? We wear so many hats. And in earlier um, episodes, I talked about um, all of the hats that, that we wear and, and how um, as we grow older, uh, we can actually put those hats down or, or the costumes um, back into the closet that match whatever we uh, needed to do or um, felt obligated to do. So now in the second part of your life, there are less obligations, but more choices to recreate yourself, right? So the next thing is the fear of disease. We, we do not like disease. Um, we, some women are really afraid because something may run in their uh, family like cancer or this or the other disease. And yet today we know that you are not your DNA uh, or is not bound to, uh, to to create or to present you with all of these things that are a possibility because our DNA has on and off switches. And um, Dr. Bruce Lipton uh, has, I don't think he has really discovered it. It was always there, but he has made us aware that Epigenetics, your genetics do not um, dictate your the, the physical health of your body. They are epigenetics. It is the environment. And part of the environment is how you think 
of course, it is also the outside environment. Do you sit in a room all day long or do you go out in nature where our bodies receive the photons of the of the light and and um, and everything that that comes from the plants and the trees and the entire environment. And um, or the other thing is, are you are you open to really uh, let go, let go of your story, right? And I always say, as we get older, what we must have in order to live happy and and embrace and be curious about what comes next in the aging process, it is um, a willingness to to let go of your to let go of your story and uh, become more engaged in, in uh, your creative capacities to create something new. And yet our bodies age biologically. Certain changes are inevitable. We tend to focus more on what we see in our outer appearance and judge or lament about like fine lines and wrinkles in the face, sagging skin around the neck, the upper arms, <laughs> uh, the, the brown or white spots increasing on the face, the arms, the legs. Those are just a few of the many complaints that I hear from my clients. It's really regarding our vanity and desire to look much young, younger than our age is actually is. And everybody ages differently. Some have, um, and some races actually age um, not as visibly as, for example, I, I come from Germany. So the Northern European skin ages more quickly than where I live now in the beautiful Bahamas, where of course, as you can see, look, look at the beauty, beauty outside. It's beautiful. So I am in the sun. Uh, yes, I protect my skin. And yet, I haven't always done that. And the skin, the, your body doesn't forget anything. So I do have quite a bit of sunspots <laughs> and um, damage in my skin. But but the, the sun is important. The sun is important. So don't stay inside. This is not natural. The sun has many, many... Uh, positive um, effects on our well-being, on our immunity, on um, on so many, uh, to on our hormones, so many things. So yes, there is also vanity to a degree, but not exclusively. How your skin looks in midlife or in the older years depends on really four factors, as I already said the race you were born into, and what are your genes? Look at your parents, maybe even your grandparents. How do they look? How much your skin was exposed to direct sun life from early on, maybe from child on? Did you bake in the sun without protection? Or did you do what you see uh, animals doing in um, midday and if they live outside? They, they look for shade. They don't <laughs> spread out in the mid, mid uh, sun and, and um, roast. So we want to tan. And so especially um, if you are in this generation born in the 50s or 60s, 40s, 50s, 60s or whatever, we, were, we wanted that tan, right? But then another um, aspect of the aging is um, aging maybe more visibly or earlier is poor lifestyle and uh, neglect in earlier years will show up at some time later it's amazing what our body can take when we when we are young it doesn't show it doesn't show us what we are doing to it this all comes later and as i said before the body doesn't forget anything. 
Not that your body is viciously trying to punish you, but every cell in your body always receives the information and it stores that memory. You may think that with new cell growth, you have a clean slate. Unfortunately, this is not quite the case. The memory of older cells create a new blueprint for the next generation of cells, the next and the next and so on. So every uh, degeneration de or any damage in the cells will also create a, not the perfect cell anymore to replenish the other one, but uh, one that kind of mirrors more, not 100%, a little good stuff is still in there, but the one uh, that it replaces. However, it also requires us that you stop what creates the problem in the first place. So, you know, you, we know today what um, healthy diet looks like. We know that we are drowning in sugar and um, that, that sugar is creating all, so many, not all, but the majority of the, of the diseases we, um, like diabetes and, and I mean, all kinds of things, heart disease, um, liver uh, problems, fatty liver, um, kidneys. I mean, the whole body is, um, it becomes more inflamed with these overloads of sugar. And the other thing, of course, is all of the artificial substances that we eat. So either you know that what you do is unhealthy and could end in ill health, or you somehow believe that disease is inevitable because you have experienced it in your family and says, well, that's just how it is. And you see the afflictions amongst your friends maybe as well. So another fear inducing path comes from the powerful advertising by, by pharmaceutical companies who want to sell their drugs to you. We are all exposed to this kind of unconscious brainwashing unless we live far removed in a natural rural environment away from televisions and other visible advertising. So then where is the evidence that a disease is a natural aging event? It is not. There is no evidence of it, none. Why? It just doesn't exist where um, for millions and millions of healthy older adult, adult, adults <laughs> um, who live in rural areas or in, um, in Europe, like in Italy, some say the blue zones, where they have um, good soil, where they live from the farmers, from the family farmers, where they, they eat the food that, that their ancestors have eaten from healthy soils and they have um, uh, beautiful big families and they celebrate with their neighbors. They share uh, food and uh, dinners and lunches with their neighbors. They just have a, a knit, a tightly knit community of exchanging joys there. They have the music and they have festivals and they dance. So the more natural your internal and outside environment is, the better the conditions in which your cells will thrive by continuously repairing and renewing tissues, organs, and therefore whole body systems. So fear of disease stems from a disconnection between your body and your mind. You may want to write this down. Fear of disease stems from a disconnection between your body and your mind. Your body knows how to repair itself, but you need to give it the right building blocks, so to speak. So if you do not feel an intrinsic relationship with your body, you don't trust the natural wisdom and healing power of your body's ability, the processes. You know, I mean, you cut yourself, your body heals, right? 
you may want to put um, uh, some protection on there, but actually you don't even need to do that. You just need to keep it clean and it will repair itself perfectly, itself perfectly. So, but if your doubts and anxieties become fear, this can create a very vicious cycle because then your mind goes into these areas of, oh my God, you know, that, that um, fear of disease actually attracts this. And then maybe you don't care what you eat because you may believe that uh, it's inevitable uh, that you get sick or that you will have this or the other disease. It's just part of getting old. But let me tell you, I hope you got this from uh, this first episode here, that this is not the case. Disease is not an in inevitable part of aging. Be and you attract into your experience what you expect and think of the most. So think of your healthy body, be uh, treat it well, but also know that it has the power to repair itself and, and feel joy and feel gratitude. It is just a simple universal law that states attra like attracts like. We know this to be true from physics and the law of attraction. So if you or when you say thank you, Father or, or universe or whoever you are, your higher self, your I am present, thank you for this healthy body that I, um, that I have. And uh, thank you for helping me to uh, keep it healthy and radiant and fit. Yes, you, you need to do something to keep it fit, right? You cannot sit on the sofa and, and um, think fitness. You have to get up and do it right? <laughs> so specific scientific research <clears throat> and trials actually prove that this is so. Your mind, your environment, and this is epigenetics, the environment more than anything else um, creates your health, well-being, or your disease. One of the most fascinating research projects I saw was from the video by Greg Braden. Um, it's amazing how one donor's DNA was put into a vial and then um, the other uh, donor was put, um, no, no, not the other donor, the same donor, but another vial was of, of that DNA was put hundreds of miles away. And then the um, the person that was nearby started to have certain, or it was asked to have certain emotions. And the DNA responded to that, but not only to that that was nearby, but the same to the one that was hundreds of miles away. So you see, it is not just right there. It is your entire environment. And since we live in this incredible um, connectivity with each other in the, in the field of electromagnetic radiance and, and frequencies, we are all connected. And so your thoughts travel back and forth all through the universe. Well, I don't want to go too far here because you may think I'm a little bit wacky. <laughs> But anyway, uh, epigenetics is, a, is proven by science. So, but what does this tell you? That fear of disease is not only unnecessary, but also could attract exactly what you are afraid of. So letting go of fear of disease is what? It's a logical choice, yes? You can stop the fantasy about what could happen by just asking yourself a few questions like, is my fantasy based on a strong belief? Maybe it is. Maybe write that down. But then the next question would, could be, by whose authority do I believe this? And you may want to write this down. 
And there may be more than one authority that you believe that comes from. Then ask yourself, is it really, really true? Probably not. And then the next question could be, will I let go of this false belief as soon as I realize the illusion? Will I actually do this? Will I actually let go of that false belief? And maybe you want to ask this other question, if this is difficult to let go of that false belief, why do I get, what, what do I get? It's kind of like a record. What do I get out of this holding on to this fear? The last point may sound a little strange, but a hidden agenda could be the magnet that keeps your false belief in place. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have examined the other points and realized that your attraction to fantasize about one or many possible diseases persists. In that case, you may use this for a purpose even if you are unaware. You may have a racket. Examine the racket is you may have a reason why you want to hold on to this. Like you may have heard that some uh, people who, who eat too much, who actually create that fat in their body as a protective shield around them, or uh, because they, they are afraid to be um, looked at, or, or um, uh, they, they actually don't want to be attractive. That's not for everybody, of course. But it could be a security blanket, almost like a security uh, to create that shield or the distance to the outside world. So to really go deeper into examining this gives you insights into a deeper part of your unconscious self. It's quite fascinating to do this. In my coach, uh, coaching programs and uh, also some of the home study programs, this point always seems to meet some resistance at first, but then <laughs> joy is relieved when understood and let go of. And in my decades of practice as a naturopath and holistic health scientist, I often found the reason why a person did not heal or wanted to get better that what she or, or he had as a racket that justified holding onto the condition, even through a verbal statement and plea, plea for healing, because some people say, yes, I want to get better. Yes, I want to lose weight. Yes, I want this. But, but it's not happening. But if you receive more attention while you have this ailment or this disease or this, you know, something that you need um, that just has given you attention. I mean, we know this from our childhood, right? When we were ill, when we were sick, when we had a little boo-boo, uh, when we had hurt ourselves, we got all that love. We got all that attention, right? So there may be something within your subconscious mind that, um, that craves that attention. And that, um, that if you receive loving attention and caring support from people as long as you are ill, but subconsciously fear that the attention may wane into nothingness should you get well, Disease may be too powerful a weapon to let go of. Yes, I said weapon. It can be a weapon. Mm -hmm. But a lot is to unpack there, of course. So thoughts, feelings, and emotions are made of energy. And you have the power of choice to decide how to use and transform even the most negative energy into a more positive one. It takes practice. But if you practice, you can master your creative energy and thus manifest what you want to experience. We know that we are energy, right? 
Yes. Be a light and color and sound dancing in a dense physical body. But even this body, every cell in our body is mostly emptiness, space, and then nucleus, and then there's energy, energy, energy. And, and all this is dancing within our body and around our body, our energy field. Yeah, we know it from quantum physics that everything is energy. I want to make you aware of a particular stream of energy outside of how we usually experience energy and how it relates to our topic here. Do you feel that you either have, you have energy or that you do not have energy? And is that not precisely what makes it a thing? How often have you either spoken these words or repeated them silently in your mind? I have no energy. I have no energy. This short phrase is one of the most frequent phrases I have heard from my clients and even friends. And we are resigned ourselves to, we have, or too many of us, have resigned ourselves to the belief that we have less energy as we age. We don't. Well, to a certain degree, yes. But this feeling of not having energy, not having the spark of life, yes, our body gets slower, definitely. And um, But anyway, we are not going into the physical uh, things too much here. I just want you to, you to be aware of this energy thing, not feeling that we don't have energy. But, even at, but you see, even at a younger age, we often accepted the fact that energy comes and goes randomly or predictably according to our state of health or the amount of sleep you enjoyed or the excitement or lack of there was. If we are really bored, there is no energy. If we have exciting things, there is energy. Where does that come from? No matter what argument you bring to defend that you cannot do much about your lack of energy, it probably is a wrong assumption. You can do a lot about it. Because here is um, here is an assertion I made I make. Your energy is inexhaustible. Yes, inexhaustible as long as you live and continuously available to you, at any age, when you are sick, yes, your energy wanes because your body is so busy. It, the energy is there, but not for you on the outside, maybe, but you, your body now needs the energy for the healing process, right? Because if you are very ill, your body's defense system may, may need to work overtime to regain equilibrium within your body systems which you may experience as a lack of energy, the outside energy. But as soon as the balance is reestablished, your energy level rises in response to the recovery. So the state of wellness is synonymous with feeling energetic. And I may say at any age. So when you declare I have no energy or I am too tired, you either are mistaken well, you have decided to defend yourself, yourself against something you don't want to do. There may be situations where you feel that the energy is sucked right out of you. These sudden events shock your body moment, momentarily, you know, whenever it, it, something happens. But energy usually returns quickly to you and allow it to be restored again. You see, the thing called energy is not a thing at all. What is it then? It is a chemical and energetic response to the state of your mind and, and emotions. Energy is always there. It's always abundant. And the lack of it is not actually there. It is mostly your perception which exists either consciously or subconsciously. 
And I have given you an example before with um, how your body heals, right? When you cut your finger, your body activates an immediate healing response. And that takes a lot of energy. Your cells, your inner wisdom decides to use energy to transport the right enzymes, proteins, or whatever else is necessary for the quickest path toward healing. It would be unimaginable for your inner energy to feel too tired. Can you... You had a heavy meal, and um, then, then your, your liver say... I feel too tired. I don't, I can't deal with this. Or your 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 stomach would say, I I don't pr produce the enzymes now. I feel I don't feel up to it. I'm too tired. That doesn't happen. Your body always knows exactly what to do, and is always energetic enough to do what is needed. Right. So if you you, you would bleed to death or succumb to a massive bacterial infection if your body would say, I'm too tired when you, have an, when you had an injury. When your energy runs freely through the designated pathways that nourish all organs and tissue, health is abundant. Meridians, we also call these pathways. If the pathways are obstructed, and they can be obstructed by many, many things. Let me just mention one here. Negative thoughts and feelings. That makes um, your energy res restrict and your body suffers. I mean, it's kind of when you feel happy, you feel expanded and open, right? It's... And your, your, your physical body, your blood cells, your capillaries, your uh, everything in your, all of the cells in your body feel that and they are relaxed. Your nervous system feels it and it goes into uh, the uh, parasympathetic, the relaxed state. Be and that's where healing, that's where relaxation is and that's where healing is. And so it's natural for your body. And when something happens and you have to run or you need a maximum of energy, all of that energy whew, goes straight into your into your legs, into your whatever. It, it makes you into your brain, of course, to find the best way to either um, fight, uh, fight or flee, right? So everything in your body uh, works energetically and it does everything it needs to do to get you back to wellness and keep you in your highest state of equilibrium just understand that your energy is always self-generated well the um mitochondria i mean it is self-generated by everything you do and of course we don't speak about if you, if you have a certain disease then you you cannot blame yourself for not having energy. There is a reason that the energy needs to go somewhere else. But a positive mind always generates energy, while a negative mind always suppresses energy. Of, of course, um, you understand this? So we are talking about, about life force energy that permeates everything. We live on a grid of energy. Our body is, a, is part of that grid of energy. And we are all, you and I and everything else that lives on this planet is intrinsically connected to it. The second source of energy for your body are the life force and the nutritional building blocks in the food you eat. This is the reason why only living food really with, with its enzymes intact, can sustain fully charged, um, can sustain your cells so that um, they are fully charged, right? That all of the processes that need to happen in your, in, in your system, from your saliva that pre-digest your food to your stomach, to your, your intestines and everything, your, your liver, that everything is in perfect harmony and wisdom to do exactly what is what the best uh, thing 
in order to for the best result. You provide your body with what it needs and you can trust your body that it performs. You have the power and ability to change your level of energy at any time and at lightning speed, yes, as fast as a thought can create a feeling, you can generate energy at will and it is immediately available to you. I'm going over time here, but I think I don't want to stop. Just think of a situation that either saddens you or feels draining. Okay. Really feel that sensation and the related emotion it evo evokes. Now leave that mental scene and imagine the following situation. You just received the news of having been gifted with a large sum of money, $1 million. Visualize being handed a check in the amount of $1 million. What just happened to your energy level? The moment you realize that you feel it, you see, you can imagine anything in your mind. It does not matter if it is real or fiction. Why? Because your body believes everything you think and feel and acts on the new information instantly. It creates all of the chemicals that are responsible for, um, for your feelings, but also what is actually in, happening inside of you. You can feel as lonely, depressed and sad with zero energy until your attention shifts to something desirable exciting, unexpected, and you become ecstatic. The opposite is also true. If you st stay in the wanting phase with the belief that you may not experience good health and doubt, if, and, and f doubt and fear creep in, your energy gets low and, and stays low. But as soon as you shift, to receiving and enjoying what you desire and see as possible and, and, and imagine it with your five senses, feel it, taste it, smell it, know it. Your energy will skyrocket. Will skyrocket? Well, rocket sky high, maybe that's what I wanted to say. It's okay. But isn't this amazing and fabulous? Experiment with this for yourself. It works like magic. And this is how you can transform your fear into freedom in a flash. As I said, it only takes um, a thought and that thought produces an emotion and that um, emotion produces the lack of energy or the increase of energy. And it is according to your belief that you create your experience and you create your reality. So where did this energy come from so quickly, you may ask? Well, as I said earlier, energy is always available to you. To whatever degree you allow it to be present. Because energy flows. It cannot be captured or, um, or restricted or seized. But it flows freely through you to the degree to which you are flowing with it. Any contraction slows and squeezes the energy to a dim flicker until you decide to open all channels within your body, mind and emotions, allowing this thing called energy to take you on the magical carpet ride. This thing that is called energy is your precious life. Yeah, oh my goodness. You may want to listen to this again because I believe this is one of the most profound and foundational, fundamental um, experiences that we have and we need to know about it, that we are in control, that we can change it. Yes? Okay, so until we come together again, 
this was uh, the first episode of, I believe, five. Now, today I took double time. So maybe there will only three more rather than four more episodes on this. But um, I hope you enjoyed this and it made um, you think and uh, and know that you have the power, you have the experience uh, and you have the knowledge. And even if it's not in your head, your body holds that knowledge, your body holds that experience, that wisdom. Trust your body, yes? Okay, so um, I'm going to close it with this year. And please share this with your family and with your um, girlfriends if they're over 45, uh, with anybody you, you think can profit from understanding the aging process better. So this was the first of probably four episodes on unpacking the fear of aging. And um, so there are, today we did the fear of the unknown and the fear of disease. So we did actually two today. The next um, one will be the fear of loneliness. And you and I know that loneliness is a real issue in um, older people. And then the fear of recreating yourself will be another episode and the fear of death. Okay, so you now know what is ahead. And um, I hope I see you again next week. Same time, same place. <laughs> Zoom, Win Win Women platform, the only uh, platform for women that that is interactive where you can be with me live. And after the first half hour, um, ask your questions. We can have conversations, not in the first half hour, but in the second half hour. But since there was nobody there uh, for me today, you got the full hour. My beloved, beautiful, beautiful women, beautiful sisters, heart sisters, soul sisters, know that you are unlimited. You are a child of the universe. The universe is unlimited. You, child of the universe, you are also unlimited. Don't forget that. You are not this body. But you take good care of this body because this is the temple through which you experience this lifetime. Yes? Okay. So um, you also know how to get in touch with me. So if you have any questions, please ask me. Otherwise, I say bye-bye for now.